The next generation of Indian Scout is here and man, is it exciting. Look at that passing power on this thing. If I ended the day on this bike right now, I would not be upset. But there's a lot to talk about. We got five new models, Scout Classic, Scout Bobber, Super Scout, Sport Scout, and 101 Scout. Here are my impressions. All right, here we go. Trail break. We got three trims on the new Scout, Standard, Limited, and Limited Plus Tech. ABS is standard on all 25 Scouts and it's non-negotiable. You can't turn that off, but you can delete that module if you decide to at some point. Another feature that's been asked for is the fuel gauge. You get that on each trim level. So there's an analog version and also a digital version on Ride Command. Finally, standard trim, you got analog gauge, LED headlight, ABS, one color, black metallic. Limited trim, analog gauge, cruise control, traction control, rod modes, USB charging, and you get some different paint. Then there's the limited plus tech trim. You got the rod command, that's the pretty screen that does the navigation, the music media control, phone call control, keyless ignition, connected rider info, and you get, you get some really nice paint. Each bike I had access to on this experience had the limited plus tech trim. There were a few limited models there with analog screens with physical key ignition, but I did not have time to ride those. You can see the traction control and the power modes as options in the menus, although power modes are not available on the Canadian models. Let's say you bought a 2025 Scout Barber in the standard trim, and then later on you say, you know what, I actually do want that cruise control. Well, Indian thought about this. They actually made the wiring, while it is tucked away on this bike, it's really hard to see, they made the bike modular where you can add those pieces later if you want. Granted, you're gonna spend more for it versus just getting the trim with it. But if you want that ride command and GPS feature later, you can get that. You want those ride modes and traction control, you can get that. So don't sweat it. But of course it makes more sense to get the trim up front if that's what you really want. A major change for the 25 Scout is this new steel tubular frame, very similar to the Indian Chief frame, but it makes it easier to customize for fabrication work like hardtailing the rear end or being simple like mounting accessories like floodlights or highway pegs around that loop down tube. Between the new chassis and the new emission compliant exhaust cannon that people don't like, Indian kept the weight approachable for new riders. But that exhaust sound is, it's a, uh, it's debatable. Each Scout has 4.7 inches of front suspension travel, including the 101 Scout with the inverted forks and three inches of rear suspension travel with the exception, I'm sorry, Scout Bobber at two inches of rear suspension travel. 101 Scout is the only option with fully adjustable front and rear suspension. However, there is no information on who makes that suspension. One modification I see people doing is taking the adjustable rear suspension from the 101 and putting that on the other Scouts. But that 101 front end, that's a different tax bracket. But up front on each Scout except the 101, you get a single caliper that provides really good stopping power and then you have a single caliper in the rear. The 101 Scout is the exception. You got dual Brembo's up front, pretty much from the Sport Chief, you get better stopping power and it shares the same rear caliper with the others. Obviously, the styling is different between Classic and the other Scouts, long sweeping fenders. However, they all share the same rear end subframe. Indian redesigned this underneath the fender, allowing a common method to bolt on components. You got a Classic and you want that Super Scout bag? No problem, it's a direct bolt on. The same for the 101 and the others, so all the future accessories will be shared on the rear end. So we got power modes and all that. Whoa! Yo! No, that's crazy. Dad. <laughs> At the heart of these new Scouts is a new engine, the 1250 Speed Plus. Essentially, it's a sibling to the Power Plus, so there's no coincidence in the name scheme, but flat torque curve at 82 pound-feet of torque. Flat means no dips or surges in torque. Up from 72 pound-feet on the previous Scout, we get a linear power band with 105 crank horsepower, up from 100 horsepower, and that power, man, it builds like a freight train, and it will catch you by surprise. It's doing really well. Jeez, man, this thing, she gets it. 
but there's still room to dial it back if it gets away from you. That's, that's good for beginners. But both horsepower and torque begin to fall off around that 7,500 RPM, but I mean, your red line, it's only 8,500 RPM. But that six horsepower difference, it matters most in the mid-range really of the power band. And you might think, well, how did they do it? Is there anything internal different from a 101 and a regular Scout? And the answer is no, it's simply a tune. And if you want that tune on your Scout that's not a 101, you simply go to the dealership, pay for the flash, and boom, you got 111 horsepower. Behind these engine covers, something else you can't see is a slipper and a clutch assist, which makes the clutch feel more light on the handle. And of course, helping prevent rear wheel instability on downshifts and heavy engine braking. Another thing that we can't see on this engine is the new transmission. Indian updated the gear ratio, which gives you more room to accelerate throughout these gears without the need to shift. And it also helps with the fuel economy. Mm -hmm. range on these bikes it's a mid-sized bike 3.4 gallons a 0.1 increase from previous scouts indian made more room for fuel with the redesign of the underlying air box and they also redesigned the tank however the new engine's efficiency nets 20 more miles of range i didn't get a chance to fully explore that theory but if ride command is accurate i had moments of 50 to 60 miles per gallon so definitely 45 to 50 is possible currently i am getting According to the rock command, I am getting about 60 miles to the gallon. 60 miles to the gallon. 3.4 tank, that's over 180 miles, dude. That's at least 150. 150 is a good amount on a bike like this, man. Straight up. Traction control and power modes, they help manage the throttle response of speed plus you have range, standard, and sport. Easily, you can change these on ride command, and they're also on the analog gauge, although they are a bit hidden. With the confirmation traction control can be turned off, the power modes function the same as the other Indian models and do not alter torque or horsepower output of the engine. It is only a throttle map, so it changes the throttle response, meaning on rain mode, it requires more throttle to move the bike, which is great for highway riding, moments without much traffic, or avoiding loss of traction on slippery terrain. Then you got standard, that's the base throttle map. You're gonna find that on the standard trim, which is good for everyday riding or in tight squeezes like lane filtering. And it's also, of course, great for beginner riders because it's not too aggressive. And then you got sport, which is mostly used for the twisty riding, less throttle required to move the bike, fun at stoplight pools. When you wanna do a quick pass on the highway, easy. Rolling burnouts, breaking that tire loose if you want to. Yeah, definitely, definitely not for beginners. Unlike Thunderstroke, there is not an option for cylinder deactivation, which cuts off the rear spark when sitting at a stoplight for heat management. But I can tell you, Speed Plus does well in this restricted, catalytic, EPA Euro 5 exhaust cannon compliant form that is in. <laughs> it does well by not cooking you at the stoplight like previous scouts would. 10,000 mile oil changes just like the previous generation Scout. Nothing says you can't change it earlier, but you get a new sight glass on the crankcase to change oil, which removes the need of a dipstick. But be careful, you might bring yourself on that header. With Speed Plus being liquid cool, it has a radiator. Indian produced this new engine with new cooling requirements and somehow made the radiator 22% smaller. But it cleans up the front end very nice and with the steel frame, they're able to hide that radiator just that much more. The radiator field has been moved to the left side of the bike behind this cover and the reservoir field has been moved to the front of the bike. Valve clearance checks. One of the most labor intensive and expensive jobs on an engine. Previously, they were 30,000 miles for the checks and now it's been up to 40,000. These head covers are removable, allowing the engine to remain in the bike. So ease of maintenance was traded for that industrial look that so many people loved about the Scout. I get it, but with the longer oil changes, and longer valve clearance checks. And that's really just a check. It makes this bike cheaper overall to maintain, which keeps money in your pocket and gives you more time to ride. Sitting on the bike, we get a clear picture of how I look on it. For my dimensions, I stand at five feet, 10 inches. I weigh about 165 pounds. My arm's length is about 24 and a half inches. So from factory, this motorcycle fits me perfectly. Suspension, brakes, rider triangle, it all works. A Scout is known for its low seat height, making it easier to throw a leg over the handle and ride. It helps with the center of gravity and it makes it less intimidating for those new riders. 
The lowest seat height is still the Sky Bobber at 25.6 inches and the others in the lineup 25.7 inches. Smaller and short riders, you will enjoy the low seat height, allowing you to put those little feet on the ground and get the bike off the kickstand no problem. Also, there is a mid control option direct from Indian if you want to reduce your leg reach, reduce reach handlebars, and also other seat options to help. While I had access to these bikes, not a single one had the mid control option. For those of you that are taller, the four controls will work great for you. There are options for new risers that come from the Indian Chief, six inch and 10 inch risers. There was a Sport Scout with the 10 inch. People love those. And there are also multiple seat options available for you as well. Whoa, she just cut off on me. My time with this new Scout would start out on Super Scout with the windshield and saddlebags. Both are quick release for easy installs. The ride would start in the streets of San Francisco and lead to climbing the hills to the famous views that the Bay Area is known for. Scout would handle this no problem, but I did have a moment of needing to learn the bike moving through traffic. We've got this nice little windshield which isn't too big because one thing about the super chief is that it sits so so high so i'm really curious actually my signal is a little flicked it so we're gonna pull that back but i'm curious how the buffeting does on the highway because a lot of times the air likes to come under when it comes under it tends to rattle your helmet from the top currently it's 61 degrees outside one thing about this new ride command you get a little bit more information about the bike health. There's an engine temp now that says 209 degrees. But there's also a PSI gauge on here, which if you have TPMS sensors on your wheels, which I'd imagine do not come from factory from Indian, you will be able to hook up TPMS sensors to see what your tire pressures are in the front and the rear. That was an accident seems to be pretty easy to do that actually <laughs> but we do have cruise control right here which is one thing that everybody's wanted on the indian scout i'm actually a fan of these they're really slick you can control the ride command from this little button if i can remember how to use it okay i probably can't use it on that screen we'll see i'll figure it out oh it's stalled again it's stalled what the hell okay oh this is gonna be fun Oh, this is getting dicey pretty quick. Let me actually pay attention here, guys. <laughs> I'm very curious to know how this thing feels once we get into sport mode, but I'm not really interested in sport mode right now. I'm still trying to learn the bike. This traffic is actually uh, a bit aggressive right now. All right. Forgot, baby. When in Cali, you split lanes. This is sketchy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got caught in that. Not sketchy at all. Ooh, she'll get down. I hear other people stalling. Ooh, these hills, man. One thing about new gauge cluster. Jesus, these hills. Come on, San Francisco. What's going on with this? <laughs> this is pretty sick. Whoa. <laughs> this incline. I don't know if you guys can get this pure sense of this incline right now. This is pretty uh insane. Changing lanes, I think. All right, brakes. Whoa, holy cow. Yep, block stall. Some of us had issues with the bikes stalling out. Even with the clutch fully disengaged, meaning the lever is pulled all the way in, it was stalled. It was a weird situation, but eventually those issues stopped after the bikes were, I guess, reaching operating temperature. But these were pre-production machines and also bikes with less than 50 miles. So maybe pre-production in combination with the break-in period was also a factor. Either way, that happened a few times throughout the trip. Like we move on. Eventually, we make it to an international stop in the Bay Area, Lombard Street. And I'm sure many of you have seen this this spot before but instead of going down the street we go up the street which gave us a chance to test scout in more uphill moments 
Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna do first gear this time. Lombard. Need to do a little bit of trail breaking. There we go, trail breaking. That's a little bit better. Yeah, trail breaking. I missed it right there. Trail breaking to the apex. Yeet. Yeah. Thank you. Woo! Yeah, like, ABS, baby. how many people do you know get a chance to go up Lombard Street? Definitely something I could cross off a bucket list. All right, ABS test. Let's go. <laughs> this thing stops. Well, look at this. This thing will jolt out from under you. <laughs> the scout was already like a little ripper, but this, oh man, this this thing is this thing's got a little attitude. It's like it's a little feisty now. It's like it knows what it is, and it's got a chip on its shoulder to prove it to you even more. Like I'm, I'm, I'm the one. <laughs> And we haven't even gotten to 101 yet, right? I can't wait. This is nice. That bobber, dude. It just, oof. Man, they did a good job on that freaking paint, man. I love the little logos in the side of the tank. And you can see those body lines. You know, when they designed this thing, they tried to give it more of a, a classic American, you know, body line shape, like on the classic cars to sculpt it. They did that all from clay was not a cat design look at that like you just got sideways this thing is so fun dude it is fun i have not gotten on the highway yet to really get a good feel for this windshield i need a little bit more speed to kind of like really test that buffeting and what's crazy is i really haven't gotten a chance to get this thing high in the rpm yet but it is fun to flog this thing around town it's like i haven't I'm having fun and not even getting into the top of the rev range and this thing revs out at over 8,000 RPM and it's just like let's just keep going buddy just keep going do you want that top end I'm just like I just I kind of just want to you know flog some stoplight the stoplight and it's like oh I could do that too and it's just like you're just ripping on it and this thing looks classic it's not the scout classic but it has that sleeper look to it somebody pulls up beside this thing man all you have to do is just press that button pop it in sport mode and you'll surprise some people you probably surprise yourself if you're not expecting it we make it to a cool coffee shop near the golden gate bridge this would be my first time seeing this iconic landmark in person it is freaking beautiful and huge in person but this gave us a great time to just chill out talk about this part of the ride we just experienced and just reflect a bit Tell you this man san francisco is a beautiful place very lucky to be out here but we stopped for a little bit of coffee gave me some time to kind of think about you know now that i've had a little bit of seat time with the scout think about the uh just how it how everything flows but then i'm on the super scout is more about comfort and you know the windshield and you know more so taking everything in than flogging it but the cool part about that new engine it's in all of the new scouts and unless you get the limited uh yeah with the limited you get the different power modes and everything versus just the analog version that just has abs but when you if you want to flog on it you definitely want the trash control <laughs> it it wants to break that tire so easily but yeah man so far i'm i'm liking it initial ride it feels like a scout it's just it feels like it has a little bit more and that little bit more is what's making the difference. So drink some of this coffee, look at the bike a little bit, hop back on it, and we're gonna get back to it. But so far, man, like I said, I like it. I really do. But that that starter cutting off thing, that's that's a little weird, but we're getting used to it. But the navigation is definitely a little bit more responsive than it used to be, man. 
Rod Command would struggle big time to just locate you. And that could be really frustrating when you really, really need it. You know what I'm saying? It has, outside of the little bit of startup de delay, it has done exactly what it's supposed to do, man. I've had Rock Command on Chief just give up on me. Like, this, it just shuts down. The, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect the bike because you can ride the bike without the screen. The screen is simply a display. It does not do anything as far as controlling the bike or it being a single point of failure, if you know what I mean. It's simply a display that allows you to interface with the bike and do different things. The steel chassis on this Scout is rigid. It takes minimal effort to shift its direction. The vibration of the handlebars and the foot pegs from the engine is very minimal and it makes for a very good riding experience. Typically when you have bikes that get high in the rev range, you get that buzzing, but I didn't feel any of that. There's also a bit of rumble that comes through the engine, through the seat, and with the exhaust, while it does leave room for potential, <laughs> there's a comfortable amount of sensory feedback that you get while riding this bike. Now this thing is, the Scout has always been flickable, but right now, I'm doing this with just my hips. Just my hips. <laughs> I haven't even been on the other ones yet, but I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I like this Super Scout. The wind buffeting, I haven't I haven't thought about it at all. But when you just juice on this thing, it 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 rips, man. It's almost like an FTR just in a a cruiser position is what is is what is giving the vibes that is giving obviously obviously it doesn't have as much horsepower as the ftr but for this chassis man again i haven't even got on the other bikes this is just god there's so much to digest with this thing i like it the balancing of the engine man it's just like it's just so harmonic but the exhaust note obviously it leaves a lot to be desired again emissions engineers are designing these bikes these days with a hand with a hand behind their back outside of the exhaust note it's not bothering me do i do i think it it, it could use a little bit more thump yeah absolutely but this thing from factory is dialed in and if you want a good performing machine like right now as soon as you get it off the floor it's gonna do that but shoot i gotta save some of this for the other ones man it's super scout man i like it i freaking like it no engine lights yet not on this one anyway about 60 miles an hour but i can tell you the buffeting i don't have much buffeting at all this windshield is doing a really good job and i think the signal lights down there are kind of chopping up some of that wind as well because i'm not getting hardly any air down here at all because that's typically where it happens Making more progress on our route, Blockhead and I hit a stoplight point and I put Super Scout in sport mode. Woo! Whoa, the front wheel's trying to pick up. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Yo, this is crazy. If not for traction control, this thing would spin the tire and probably lift the wheel. And that's why I feel like they have this on here. This bike will move. <laughs> Jesus, dude. <Look> that. <laughs> My goodness. On the way to our next stop, we hit some twisty bits and that gave us a bit of a tease on how these bikes handle and what to expect later. With three inches of rear suspension travel and a low seat height, you get 33 oh, degrees yeah, of yeah. lean angle, which is I think four degrees more from the previous Scout, which is still not much, but with good cornering and good braking technique, you can really have some fun on this bike without scraping too much peg. using mostly just the engine braking which is really good not too much where you feel like the bike's gonna just like bog down but it's just like just subtle to slow the bike down you know some bikes will have too much engine braking and it's almost like it feels like the bike's heavy so right now it's just kind of just, just like just coasting you know 
Alright, so. Another fish grip, fish grip, fish grip. As we travel more out of the Bay Area, we begin to see more of what makes Pacific Coast Highway so special. And to be real, man, even as the first part of this experience, I wouldn't be mad if I finished it all on this bike. I was comfortable and I was seriously enjoying myself on this right bike. If I ended the day on this bike right now, I would not be upset. I really, truly would not. Cause I've been ripping, I've been ringing this thing, man. It's been getting sideways with me. It's been launching me forward, wanting to pick up the front end. It's been dipping in and out of this traffic. It's been handling these curves with a few scrapes. It's challenging me to be a little bit better of a rider so I don't scrape as much, but I don't feel bad when I scrape it. Cause it's like, dude, that's why the pegs are there to let you know how far you've leaned over. Take that corner better. But this, this bike is just, oof. Quick stop. And now, about to hop on a Scout Classic. A little bit of a ride in on that. Grab some food, but like I said, if I did not get on any other Scout today, I would be very happy if I ended the day on that Super Scout, but this Scout Classic's not gonna have the windshield. It does have the Rock Command on it, so no analog experience. I think all the bikes here at this current time have the uh, push button start, so I get traction control, power modes, pretty much everything without the bags and the windshield, so let's get on this thing and see how it is. Oh, wait, I got a chassis fault. What the hell is going on with this, man? Alright, this one's being a little weird. Let's see. Diagnostics. ECU security status. I don't think I got the key. Well, whatever. We're going to figure it out. If it dies on me, then hey, it just dies. It is not performing any way that it's not supposed to. It's just, you know, flashing that message up there, so... We're gonna see what happens, but otherwise, we're gonna send it in this beautiful PCH weather and scenery. My God, dude. <laughs> but the feeling on the Scout Classic compared to the others is pretty much the same. Uh, you know, the big thing com compared to the Super Scout is that I just don't have a windshield. I don't have bags. So I guess you could say I saved a little bit of weight but definitely I feel more of that chill that's in the air. We're close, closer to water. So let's see what the ambient temperature is. The bike tells me it is 58 degrees outside. The engine temp is 187 degrees. I have 93 miles of range, averaging 28 MPG. We've been flogging these things. So 3.4 gallons times 28. I can't do that math in my head right now. <laughs> well, let's just say 25 times three that's 75 but add a little bit more in there yeah maybe i don't know 90 miles or something like that but we've been flogging so this you, you would definitely get better if you're not being crazy on it you know i have not gotten a chance to use the cruise control there's this button right here you just press the button once then you press down on that same button you get set and now we're in cruise control if you want to decrease it and tap that button down if you want to cancel it, you can roll that throttle forward just a little bit. It's like a little bit of resistance and that is one way to cut it off where you can pull the clutch in. It's a little bit more abrupt. You can cut it off where you can hit either the front or, I mean, yeah, the, uh, the front brake or the rear brake and knock it off as well. Or you can press the button. So there's multiple ways to cut the cruise control off. But that is, again, one big thing that many people have asked for Scout. But one question I've always had is if they added that, would having that feature push people more towards Scout and not Chief? Because I always thought that they wouldn't add it because they wanted you to eventually upgrade from Scout to a bigger touring bike, right? But now they've said, you know what? This is what people want. We're gonna add it. And now we have the cruise control and of course the screen and you know different features that people wanted on Scout. Roads are working the suspension three inches in the back the only bike here again that does not have three inches of rear travel is the scout bobber others have mentioned 
the only thing that they wish I ain't gonna say the only thing but you know what can make the scout bobber better three inches of rear travel what you could always do you can take the rear suspension off one of these bikes any of the other scouts and throw the three inches on the scout bobber it, it'll mount straight up and the beautiful thing about each one of these scouts is that they all share the same subframe which means that you can take any of these parts off of the other ones and put them on the other ones i know this is what you wanted that's what you wanted <laughs> it's there let's see how quick the rocket man catches up oh dude it caught up man this thing's catching up let's go there it goes so there's a little indication on the screen to let you know that you're cruising that's it man cruise control every bike needs cruise control man i can't that's i've been i would die on this hill <laughs> you want to speed up speed up set it again now it's set Woo, getting a little quick there you would think getting off the super scout i wouldn't enjoy the classic as much right no wind protection no bags wrong <laughs> i was having a ball on this thing Ooh, I gotta get out of it, man. Too much throttle. <laughs> All right, here we go. Part two. <laughs> or three or four, whatever we're at now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Fun, fun, fun. Nice. Nice. All right. Those rocks. Ouch, dude. Those rocks are not fun. All right. Might want to back off a little bit. <laughs> Dude, the way you can just power this thing right out of the corner, it's crazy. And I'm doing this on a Scout Classic. It does not look like it can do this. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, this platform is so nice, man. This road puts Scout through a reasonable test. Same suspension setup, just different styling. The thing about this route, it was enjoyable, but there were bumps mid-corner that would throw you off your line. It was unsettling to the suspension, but the chassis in conjunction with that front end, man, it would correct itself with not much That's effort. A good one. On a Scout Classic, man. Oh, that was a big bump. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that caught me off guard a little bit, that bump. Nothing that we can't uh, handle, though. Oh, scraped that time. Took down a little uh, fast. Trail break. Bump. Only reason I do that one because I saw what happened up front. All right. All right. There we go. Yep. There we go. Oh, bump. Yep, those will get you. Uh, their bumps are in just the weirdest places. Talk on up out of that. Those bumps will throw you off. Yep, go. Alright, here we go. Uh-huh. Woo! So right now, man, this thing is this thing is taking everything I'm throwing at it. Scout. It's just these bumps are a little mid like the corner which is just weird the bike behind me is actually a scout bobber he is taking that like a champ and he's trailing me pretty close so if i make a mistake he's right in he's right in my rear end you know what i mean i didn't take that corner right but it's okay i hear people's tires skidding oh this is great that was pretty sick yeah. You're like mid turn and just swoop. Like the yeah, try it on the bike with two inches to travel. I was about to say legend. He was right there the whole time. Too. Yeah. Not the best bike to travel. Yeah. <laughs> I hope Eddie is gonna buy me a new spleen. <laughs> <laughs> to think that we were riding like that on a Scout Bobber, Scout Classic, Scout Classic. There's only one 101 in this entire group, but we were doing that on these bikes. Yeah. <laughs> you were handling that thing. 
Thanks, man. So, so what do you think about the, the bumps in the middle of the turns? So there was a couple really gnarly ones, and uh, I was actually pretty surprised by how the suspension handled it. Yeah, I feel like it was right on the edge of losing it. Yep. But man, like, yeah, whenever you feel like the kind of the tire like re get traction with the ground, you're like, whew, thank God. Yeah. Then the handlebars are like, whoop. Yeah. Whoop. And it all happens in like an eighth of a second. It's yeah. so fast. But to think that we were doing that on Scout Classics. Yeah. That's <laughs> Scout dude, Classics. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, we're doing this on a bike called a Classic. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look like it can do that, but we were. I, I scraped a few times, but the majority of the time I was not scraping. Yeah. Were you right behind me? Uh, I had one person between us. Okay. Yeah. There was a couple times I could hear from behind me. I'm like, it's just like. <laughs> yeah. And then, and, then you hear, and then you hear like the tires locking up. Yeah. It was fun. Getting to ride these roads and be in this environment is an absolute privilege that I'm well aware that I have. Now, it was time to maximize that more and hop on this Scout Bobber. The lowest seat height of the lineup at 25.6 inches, lowest rear suspension travel at two inches, the bike that sold me on this brand, only redesigned. However, Blockhead would also be on a Scout Bobber, only this one ran into a problem, it wouldn't start. Back on the Bobber, baby, press that button. Fire it up. But this screen, pre-production man, it has like this little delay. This one's giving us a little bit of trouble. Like I said, Indians uh, told us there's some pre-production stuff going on with that software that they're trying to work out. It's, it's a little weird. Then you kind of have to like press the button and just wait like 15 seconds for it to allow you to power the bike, uh, to start the bike. Uh, stuff like that happens. Okay, at home on the barber. So we got power modes and all that. Whoa! Yo! No, that's crazy. Dad, <laughs> what's crazy about it is you're, <laughs> you're in a different stance. You have less suspension travel. You're more like slammed to the ground. And it's like this thing's got that big front knobby tire. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh yeah. I feel like I'm on a muscle bike ride like that, dude. Except I got the skinny tire back here. Not much traction back there <laughs> at all. But the Scout Bobber, out of the bunch, the biggest difference is it has one inch less suspension travel. But this bike will have, uh, I think it has limited plus tech, meaning you get trash control, you get power modes, you get rock command, obviously, this beautiful screen. Then you also get navigation. Let's see how quick it picks me up. One of the big things with rock command, very vocal about it. It's not quick to pick you up and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, man. But that one that block was on for some reason, man, that thing just would not turn on. But they pop, they powered it on, tried to power it off, power it on, power it off. More than likely, it just software just locked up, which is a, it's not a good thing. So hopefully that gets addressed. Like I said, Indian let us know before we even started today that 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 is a known problem that they are actively working on. So hopefully they figure that out. But it's my job to tell you. It happened. We're moving on. This is comfortable, man. Cruise control. Ah! Can I keep it? There we go. Every time I get an opportunity, cruise control on a scout, man. Uh, can I hold it? There we go. <laughs> uh, how long can I hold it? All right, enough of that. Riding a scout bobber, you're closer to the ground, more forward position. You feel everything. But this new frame, this new engine, the option of cruise control, it's a wonderful feature. I had this moment where I was gonna pass this van. Didn't need the downshift, just a slight twist of the throttle, in this case, standard or sport, and you quickly build enough speed to make a pass. I wanna get in front of them, but uh, maybe I'll do it now. Fifth gear, that was a fifth gear pull, folks. Didn't take much. Dude, it doesn't take much to get this thing up to speed. It, you have to kind of remember that you don't uh, you don't have a lot of weight going on here. 
less weight, more power, more torque. <laughs> it's, it's, this, this bike gets up there really fast. After more time with the PCH Coastline, I'm riding this Scout, enjoying this moment. Not once have I thought, I'm gonna slide off this seat. This may not be the most comfortable seat out there for some of you, but as I've said before about Scout Road, it holds you in well, especially when you crack that throttle back. Have you, do you remember the seat that used to come on a Scout Bobber? Bruh, that, that was barely a seat, and now we have a seat that actually holds you in. Yeah, especially with this new power increase from the engine, I have no problems with this seat. <laughs> I've been on the bobber for a little bit. I can say <laughs> it has amplified uh, my uh, or accelerated my comf uh, discomfort. <laughs> so I you know I had a little bit of discomfort. You know, you've been riding bikes like this, and you know you get a little fatigued over time. But you feel every little bump with this thing, and it's always been that way always but what gives us the the bobber that slammed look is the three inches i mean the two inches so if you want to you can always just add you know better suspension but yeah this thing is putting more fatigue on my growing area but am i upset about it no it's just you just kind of accept that out of the box with the bobber it's not something that i unexpect at this point you know what i'm saying so i'll tell you guys this I'm angling it this way because the sun's behind me and I'm black. <laughs> um, riding these bikes um, and trying to get on each one to try to give you like some type of thoughts on it. It is really hard because it's five bikes. You got uh, Classic Scout, Super Scout, Sport Scout, 101, and the Bobber. Even though they all kind of share the same, you know, chassis and suspension outside of the uh, Bobber and the 101 with the inverted. It's really hard to cover five bikes in such a short time. But riding on them today, I rode the Bobber, Classic, and Super. You know, I'm getting more uh, knowledge on how these things like to be ridden. Obviously, they're rev happy. And, uh, you know, you don't have to do a lot of shifting because that torque is in every gear. Um, but today was good. Tomorrow, we ride, we, we ride the uh, 101 and we ride the Sport Scout previously the rogue but today i get a little downtime to kind of digest it all look back on you know what we did today and going tomorrow you know with the knowledge of okay now i understand you know a little bit more about this bike i would start my day on the best scout indian had to offer the 101 that would make sports scout my last ride it had big shoes to fill. Block is starting out on the Sport Scout and I'm starting out on the White 101. So I'm gonna be a little bit more twisty, a little bit more technical today. So let's get to it. Moving through the streets of Santa Cruz, we hit some local spots to get warmed up for the upcoming path through various parts of the Redwoods. But I will find out later how well this windshield does at blocking wind. Not as well as Super Scout, but it is manageable even on the highway similar to the Sport Chief. The front end on the 101 is more responsive, inverted forks, and while the rear end is three inches, it has the potential for more tuning to your specific needs. Combined with six inch risers, the setup is comfortable for me, again, five feet, 10 inches. I wouldn't experience the full benefits of the suspension here, but at stock settings, I was happy and I knew I looked good riding this thing. In Cali, the cars, they expect motorcycles to just filter by, and most of them would simply move over for you. It gives us an opportunity each time to just blast past the people with the torque that these bikes have. And it's so freaking fun to just rip on these new engines. And the suspension on 101 just makes it all more enticing to just push it more. But with the confidence you get from that front end combined with the dual brakes, you can go into a corner hot and really have some fun. Suspension on this thing is really good. Mm -hmm. 
Things got interesting for 101 on this part of the road. A lot of tight corners that challenges the lean angle at 33 degrees. With better entries, those corners can be taken without drag and pick. That trail breaking I was doing. Yeah, at some point I lit the rear pads up just enough and caused a bit of a smoke show. Slow my momentum down, trail break in. Yep. Trail break. This was a little chunk. Ow. I hit the uh, reflector. Yeah, this is a little challenging here. This bike's handling it. I'm just trying to learn. There we go. ABS baby. Huh? Oh, my brakes were smoking. Oh, they were. Huh? It was a bad end for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> front or back? Uh, back. Ah, okay. Yeah. Dragging it the whole way down. Huh? Were you just dragging it the whole way down? Uh, not. I wouldn't say dragging, but. I mean, I'd rather than be smoking than you not stopping, you know? Yeah, that's true. Still work. While no physical issues happened to the bike, I didn't lose brake feel. It's worth noting. My guess with the momentum of going downhill, less airflow now. compared to the front brakes. Man, those brakes, they were getting cooked. But again, no issues, no warping, Double but it's worth brakes. noting. It happened, we move on. Yeah, better, 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 better. Better, 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 cornering better. Let's go, baby. Just need to learn a little bit. Always room to improve, man. Make sure you're having more fun with this stuff. Yep. This thing handles so freaking well. It is so much fun, guys. I can tell you so far the 101 has been an absolute pleasure man it's been a real treat a real real treat the front end on this thing is pretty good i like it a lot very responsive even in the stock setup it's dope so i can't imagine once people start tinkering with the settings what they can get out of this thing I'm glad my brakes are starting to get a little bit of uh ability to get cool you know so haven't touched the brakes in a minute here going about 55 just enough to feel this man yeah we're getting it now nice little rhythm really nice rhythm really really nice rhythm yeah, really, really nice rhythm. I got Dustin from Revzilla right behind me on a uh, the white 101. Yeah, that one was fun. Ah, oh, come on. We were just getting it, man. Feeling it, bro. <laughs> that was a nice little section. Nice, nice little section. Good job, 101. After some really good riding on the 101, we'd find a stopping point for me to now switch over to Sport Scout. I didn't know how to feel about this one. I felt like I had everything I needed for the rest of the day, but I needed to give Sport Scout a fair shot. So some have mentioned that the horsepower difference, you feel it in the mid range. So it's like, rather than it kind of tapering off, you just feel it building more and more. So I think I may feel that difference between the 101 and the Sport Scout. So we're gonna test that. But you know, it's six horsepower. I think the big difference for some people is just gonna be the weight difference. You know, if you're a heavier person, you obviously want more horsepower, right? So you pull the bike more. So we're gonna see, um, I mean, the bike, <laughs> The bike handles good and it feels good as as it is with that torque, so we'll see. Tell you what, not too fond of the mirrors down there. Looks cool as crap, but Oh yeah, these brakes feel 
little bit more touchy than the other one. One thing about riding uh, these different bikes at a time, I just got off the 101, is uh, they're all, even though they're set up the same, they're not always the same. Like you'll get on one and the brakes might feel a little bit more touchy than the other, or the uh, mirrors might be set a certain way, the clutch might feel a certain way, because we're all different riders and we push these bikes differently, you know what I mean? So. But I was telling them, I mentioned that the horsepower difference, the six horsepower between the none 101 models, I was not struggling to feel it. I was like, I don't know if I can feel the difference because the way I feel things, I have to get on one thing and then get on the other thing to feel the difference. And now that I'm doing these third gear pulls, I think I may be feeling the difference that they're talking about. But that's because I simply just got off of one and got on the other versus yesterday. I rode all of the same bikes, slept overnight, refreshed, and then came back to ride this. You know, so that's the difference, I think, right now. Yeah, if you decide later that this is what you want, you want the uh, the extra power, you just have, the, have, have it flash. Then I'm sure, even from there, you know, you can unlock more if you take this exhaust off. This exhaust is restrictive. The air filter is gonna be restricted from the factory. So there is more room to, you know, maximize this bike for sure, the potential that it has. But now even without the tune, the more top end, this thing still, <laughs> that mid-range on that torque is so nasty, dude. It is so nasty. And I have yet to even get the red line in this gear. Third gear, just like on the 101, is so plenty. So plenty. <laughs> plenty full of torque, man. You can just ride third gear for most of your cornering, especially if they're back to back to back to back corners. Yeah, it's plenty, man. Totally. Riding Sports Scout, besides the non adjustable suspension like the rest of the Scouts and the horsepower difference, it feels very close to the 101. It darts in and out of the corners very well, good pull throughout the rev range. The brake feel, while not dual disc like the 101, is adequate to me. It actually feels like you're riding a 101 because they're using the same six inch risers, the same seat setup, the same forward controls. And I initially thought I wanted to swap back to the 101 after spending time on the Sports Scout, but with more miles, I would find myself just as happy with the experience. I don't know how to even chop this up, dude, because there's so much, there's so much good road in here. <laughs> It's going to be so hard to just kind of like chop this up, man. It's, it's so good. Like, you, you know how you would just like, oh, I'll just only do like this little portion of the road. All of this is just such good uh, showcase for riding this bike. All of this. Like, they picked the best roads for this, man. Because this bike's nimble. It's not too like, like these roads are not too much for this bike. I would not want to be on anything else right now other than the Scout. Back like straight up, I'm just, I'm happy. Like, when we stop, I get excited to get back on it. Because I know, like, this thing's fun through the twisties. It's going to do everything we ask of it. Yeah, it's just, it's a good platform for this kind of stuff. And this is just the technical riding side of it. It's not just, like, the just cruising, and, you know, weekend warrior kind of thing. It's just, like, it's just a straight up hidden twisties and like restaurant and bar hopping you know it's fun with more beautiful scenic routes in our path we hit more tight <laughs> very tight twisty roads with some close moments and not once did i think you know i don't want to be on this bike i'm ready for some food now though <laughs> i'm not gonna lie <laughs> they have been taking us on technical road by t uh, technical road after technical road you know oh this is an interesting one look at that corner That's probably the tightest one I have to imagine. Whoa, hello. Woo! Yeah, it's definitely. Oh. Definitely the most technical and tight we've been on since we've been here. I don't want to do this one again. <laughs> not that the bike isn't doing what it's supposed to do, not that the road isn't great. This stuff will wear you out. <laughs> 
need some hydration. But luckily the weather is actually, ooh, got distracted. The weather's actually really good right now. I'm trying to, I don't know what the temp is. Let's see what the temp says on the bike. Temp says it is 70 degrees. So yeah, it's like perfect weather through here. Shade, a little bit of breeze. Oh, look at that tree. You would get caught up so much on just looking at, uh, you know, scenery. But you have to focus, man. You really have to focus. Even without the more responsive front end and extra horsepower bump, I'm enjoying the Sport Scout, and I had a few things to say about this platform as a whole. I can tell you, man, this, uh, this bike is going to surprise a lot of people. I think India did a good job revamping this bike not going too far and the things that people wanted for the for the most part the majority of people they added it man and there's still room in there to make this thing your own the head covers that's a mixed bag for some people i look at the positive and say hey you know it's easier to remove this now if you need to do any kind of work in there and also you can customize this more powder coat it change the color of it if you want the cruise control the tech it's all there, man. If you don't want it, you know, you can still go analog. But also, the swing arm, for instance, is the exact same one off of the previous generation. If you want to add a 240 back there, the aftermarket has it there. I would probably go as high as a 200. 180 will fit back there, no problem, with the, uh, the subframe. So, they, they, just, they just refined it, man. And there's going to be a lot of people that are first time cruiser owners or want to be cruiser owners that are going to be looking at this bike and go you know i like that one of the bunch or you could just pick up a used one if you can't you know afford it right now and i look at this too as would this bike lure somebody like myself into the brand and the scout bobber did and i think it looks better me personally i think it looks better if you can't afford the tech right away and you want to build yourself into the tech package you can but of course it's going to be more expensive down the line to add those pieces manually versus just buying it with it already on the bike so that's something to consider and i look at these bikes as how easy are they to work on right and now that i have a scout 60 a scout bobber 60 in the garage i'm getting a little bit of that idea on how these uh scouts are put together and these scouts should be easier to work on and easier to maintain. The little stuff like valve clearance checks are now at 40,000, which ultimately lowers the cost of maintaining this thing. Because previously, you had to lower the engine to do it. And now, if you want to check that, you just pull the head cover off. So it removes the look, that industrial look of the engine, but long term is saving money and maintaining this thing which beginner riders entry level riders or people who just want this smaller feeling bike or just want to scout one on one all of that that makes this thing that much sweeter and all the tech cruise control and all that's just an added bonus at this point in the ride we've done mostly back roads with no real time on the highway and we would finally get that moment and this would be the first time that I would go full throttle on Scout. Uh, ah, shoot, that was a big bump. Uh, what fitting way to uh, end our twisty day of riding on Scout than get on the freeway. Which is the first time we've done it <laughs> since I've been here. This one shows doing exactly what you wanted to do, is chopping up that wind. I don't feel it, you know, coming up under here at all. I'm good. One thing I did say about the Super Scout was that I did not feel like it had any buffeting issues like my Super Chief. Because when you have those windshields like that, what happens is, yes, you're being, the winds, like you can, like the winds being blocked here, but it's also allowing wind to come under and it rattles your helmet from the bottom. But right now, I'm good. I like this, it's comfortable. And I'm pretty sure if I push this up to about 85, it would still be just as comfortable. And I turn my head, you know, to look, it's a little bit more tolerable than just like, you just feel the, you know, 
way to grab your whole face because there's nothing here chopping it up. So yeah, do a good job. But making our way through traffic, we lane filter as cars move out of the way, making for a smooth entry back into the streets of San Francisco, where our time and experience with Scout would unfortunately, man, come to a close. Filtering, man, that's all we're doing. I wouldn't dare try this in Alabama. Somebody would open the door on me rather than spread out to allow us through. I've had people actually move in to try to block me. But hey, it is what it is. Maybe one day. But right now, this is the move. This is the move. Yep, getting tighter now. Uh-huh. Yep. Just whoop around like that. Oh, Indian Scout, I love you. Even with the good riding we had, first generation issues, engine stalled, keyless ignition power on loops, key fob flashing on the ride command dash, Indian was aware of these issues and they were on site to work through these problems. And I'm confident that they're gonna fix them. Between the days of riding, I was most surprised by the fun of the classic. It had that traditional styling with hidden attitude. It hides the performance of Speed Plus and the tech so well. My favorite compromise of the bunch, Sport Scout. I found the middle ground with the handling characteristics of it, the comfort, the styling, the tech. And if you wanted to use a saddlebag from the Super Scout, you'd have it done in minutes. The Scout Bobber felt aggressive and it looked tough. It also rode tough, <laughs> but you'd expect that going in. That bike, that Bobber, it still will bring new riders into the brand as it did for me. I love that bike. Super Scout, it felt planted and it was comfortable enough to ride through many gas fill ups. <laughs> I enjoyed the riding experience on the Super Scout more than I would for my Super Chief simply off the wind channeling alone. And the best performer overall, of course, goes to 101. It does everything so well and you'd expect it to given the title and the price. The fully adjustable suspension while we didn't get a chance to try that out, the riding position, that mid-range bump over the others, it made it a blast to ride in this environment and my goodness, the paint. Indian has done well with this paint. It's beautiful. So, an iconic motorcycle evolved into a more iconic motorcycle. Maybe? I think Indian did really well to not over-engineer this platform. It is so easy to overdo it. But they gave this platform more room to breathe and still be familiar and still be attractive to a range of riders. Having the flexibility between the range is what really makes this platform thrive, especially given the tech. Even though Indian, man, they got some work to do it. They got some work to do in that area. But the new engine, the new chassis, everything has made this platform step forward. This feels like a Scout. It looks like a Scout, only it's better. And for some people, most people, I think that's enough. As always, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions and comments, leave them down below. If you need any specific price points and all the nitty gritty about these bikes, go to IndianMotorcycle.com. That is the best place to get everything about this bike. And you can click here to watch more 2025 Indian Scout content. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.